Uh, I invite, I would like to invite Mr. Lekaraj Sharma uh, to moderate this panel today. Lekaraj is the Senior Director at Adobe India. Um, he builds world class products and uh, an engineer from Bitsbilani. Uh, Lekaraj reveals his passion as a teacher and contribute to the society as a volunteer teacher at Evidya Loka in the Chengarbasar district in the state of Jharkhand since 2018. Uh, thank you, Lekraj, for taking this uh, as Guti panel for this day. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Venkan. Hope everybody can hear me. I uh, want to make sure logistically all is well. Okay. Uh, great to be here. Uh, as uh, uh, Venkat mentioned that uh, we are all super passionate to uh, actually use this uh, wonderful platform with their Loka. And not only 50 plus colleagues from Adobe India, but thousands of you across the world, as Venkat mentioned, have really used this platform to reach out to these kids and make a difference to their life. And these kids come from rural background and they are most of the time first time learners in the family. So we are hopefully if they learn, there's a lot more that's gonna change in the family and their society and the and the rest of the world actually, right? And we all know that uh, teaching online is not without the challenges, but with the love and patience and sharing of these tips with these forums and other means, we can really actually make this learning a lot more fun and maybe stick with them and make it super enjoyable for the kids and for us actually as well. So with that, let me just um, kick off by introducing this uh, esteem panel that we have. Let me start with uh, Suresh. And Suresh is actually uh, the assistant professor at uh, ISC, and he's uh, he he loves he loves uh, besides his academics, he loves to actually figure out a way to uh, contribute back to uh, as a teacher he himself as a teacher contribute back to the teaching community. He loves to see if how we can deliver content that is a lot more collaborative in terms of learning. Then next we have uh, Murlidhar. He is uh, all, he's, he's a sort of a industry veteran and he's also teaching at uh, IIIT Bangalore. And he has been associated with a lot of farms, uh, including the educational farms where he has founded uh, hundreds of institutes and he has been actively training not only industry professionals but teachers and parents actually as well. He was a, one of the incidentally he was one of the first. Um, uh, he was a he was part of the team that designed the supercomputer at uh, India actually. And then we have Bhavna, and she's a postdoc at uh, Technical University Munich, and she's an alumni of Bach as well. And uh, her research interests are in the polymer field and uh, she she has been uh, associated with uh, Evidya Loka and she is also teaching at her native state in Uttarakhand. And then we have Padma and she is a scientist at NASA um, and joining us from the US right now. And uh, she is uh, besides, uh, she is very passionate about women empowerment and besides uh, the the normal languages that uh, most of the Indians may know. She also knows Spanish. Um, and she was part of the Chandrayaan 1 mission in some form supporting that mission. So we know that uh, NASA is a dear to a lot of folks around the world. Then we have Arun and he's a consultant with Engineers Without the Borders. Again, joining us from uh, US. And he has been a, one of the longtime veterans at uh, Evidya Luka, teaching for last three years in his native state of Karnataka. He's super passionate, has tons of ideas about literally everything. And uh, so we really look forward to engaging with him in the rest of the forum to hear his tips. Last but not the least, we have Professor Vish, who is a chair at uh, School of Management at UC San Diego. And he's also sort of part of a lot of other uh, centers like innovation centers and as well as the Institute of Global Entrepreneur. He's a sort of a distinguished uh, innovation expert 
uh, known across the world. Uh, and he also is a multilingual besides the usual Indian languages. He can, he can sort of converse with you in Japanese and Turkish and other places. He has been voted as the most valuable, uh, he's noted as a MVP officer for executive MBA students multiple times actually. And he's a regular consultant to startups to a variety of internships. So with that, let me, let me just start uh, rolling out this um, thing. I hope the Padma is there. I'm not able to see her. Is Padma there or? Yes, I am. Okay, wonderful, wonderful Padma. So Padma, I think today is a special day. Um, with all the moon landing and everything else, and you are being yes. part of a NASA, I guess we all get inspired when we hear what NASA, right? So we'd love to hear from you on how, what brought you into the teaching. I know you also teach at other uh, institutes actually as well in terms of you're doing voluntary teaching. Can you talk a little bit about what inspired you to do voluntary teaching and particularly why Evidya Loka seems like your favorite platform? Yeah. Well, okay. Um, let's see. I do the Reading Partners for America, which is very similar. It's not similar to Evidia, but the concept is you go teach in some of these um, less fortunate neighborhoods, I guess, kids. And just basically, I'm supplementing. So um, as I was winding down my work at NASA, I thought, okay, when I step down, I'm going to this is what I want to do. Maybe I'll move to India and I'll be able to, you know, you have these fantasies, right? Uh, work for this NGO, volunteer. Then I was just Googling, believe it or not. And I saw this and I said, wow, what a brilliant idea. You know, this, you're using internet, high tech. We don't have to be physically there. And I mean, so with that, you know, just, I just thought the idea was just amazing. So I didn't even know such a thing existed. And then once I connected to one of the schools, you know, you get addicted. I mean, it's just like so incredible, rewarding, you know, the, what be, so little they, and they, you give and how much they receive, you know. And that's very, very rewarding. I mean, I love seeing that. There's a positive feedback with the kids and whether it's because we're using Skype or whatever, um, but it's been fabulous. So. It was really by my by luck I found Evidia Loka, and then I've just kind of stayed on because I just think it's great. It's a great thing they're doing. Venkat is doing. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Padma, and we'd love to hear more from you as you go along. Let me let me switch over to Bhavna, and I know that she's a budding research scientist, and I'm sure that she's gone a long way in her field. Since you're teaching science to the students, Bhavna, would you like to share how do you make science really a fun subject for the students, right? And how do you sort of use variety of techniques to develop the curiosity about science and love for science? Uh, yeah, so actually I uh, conduct a lot of activities in my uh, classroom and I'm basically inspired by uh, this uh, National Geographic website, which actually have, you know, a lot of uh, pre-designed classroom activities. And uh, these activities uh, not only help students to grasp concepts, but uh, since they are divided into small groups, so, you know, small individual groups, they develop their communication skills and, you know, they collaborate efficiently with each other. And moreover, they also develop some leadership skills, which is quite important. And for example, uh, to teach, uh, you know, something related to growth of plants and uh, uh, seeds, and to teach uh, them something about seeds and agriculture, I very recently gave them a project on hydroponics, which they loved. And along with that, there was also this uh, concept of plastic management, which I wanted them to, uh, you know, realize because plastic is like one of the nasty things. We are facing a lot of issues with it right now. So I combined these two things and they were able to you know, learn the concepts very nicely. And at the same time, they were more aware about environmental sustainability. So yeah, and finally they enjoyed this project a lot. Thank you, thank you. I think that's a great tip that giving them the local projects and engaging them on those activities really can uh, really make learning science 
Irfan. Thank you for the tip, uh, Mauna. Let's switch over to Arun. And Arun, I just indicated that you have been teaching me with Dr. Luka uh, for quite long now, and you have developed your own variety of techniques, including figuring out how to connect locally with the students in the local language and things like that. And uh, so can you share with us how can we as online teachers engage better with the students? We know that they are a first time uh, learners actually, and they have their own challenges. Uh, we have own challenges of online environment actually as well. How do we sort of overcome these challenges and how do we really engage them in their local context? Thank you for providing a fabulous platform. I've been teaching at Evidya Loka for the last three years. I've been teaching English at Upina Beta Gary. It's a small village north of Darwat. And uh, personally, I have had a personal journey. I call this as the last meter problem. We are there, but we are not there. Our screen, our terminal, our we are able to see them, but we cannot connect. So in the last three years of journey, uh, I figured out there are four things you need to do. Uh, one is, this is especially true for all new teachers who are looking to connect. So connect is the first C. There are four Cs. One, you need to connect. Second C is you need to create some context. And the third C is you need to do communication between you and the peers and the class teacher and the class assistant. And fourth, most important thing I would say is the class assistant. You have a fantastic resource. They fill the gap, the last meter gap they fill the gap with the students. With all these four Cs, I believe you can be a very effective uh, online teacher. In my own personal experience, by calling out backbenchers, by talking to a little bit shy people, people sit in the back, uh, just acknowledging them that they exist. They come on over and talking to them, you break the ice and that is a connection part. And as you go, you need to, any slide, anything you show, make sure you put some local language in that slide or in that content you're showing or the whiteboard you're writing so they can connect with it and it is not completely alien. And now they're feeling more comfortable. So you're giving them the context. And the third and the most important thing is to make sure you communicate with, so I made groups, group projects, group activities, dictionary activities, reading and finding nouns, verbs, finding meanings. And we, in, in fact, even if we had a, a vocabulary competition between the rural schools uh, online, it was fantastic. So you had to communicate in multiple ways. And the fourth C, I really admire all the class D assistants who work there. They are our leg and feet there. We are just the ears and the eyes, uh, but they connect the gap uh, if we engage with them sooner, if we can tell them in case the connectivity doesn't happen, in case something contingency happen, what to do, read a book, ask them to explain a verb or find a verb and noun in a book or an adjective and find meanings. So your class assistant is the key. Uh, this has been my experience. These are some of the ways you can certainly improve your quality of engagement with children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Arun. Those were super tips. I think the central message is connect, connect in all possible ways, locally, to your class teachers, to multimedia, to multiple stuff. So thank you. Those were very useful tips. Really appreciate that. And we'll continue our conversation. Yes. Rish, if you are there, I'd like to switch over to you. Um, and uh, uh, so Suresh, can you talk a little bit about that, how you know that you are I know that you are passionate about making students learn in a collaborative environment. Can you talk to us a little bit more about what kind of content and what kind of teaching methodologies we can use to really make this collaborative learning work for students in any with their local environment? Rish? Uh, yeah, first of thank all, you. Uh, thank you everyone. And it's a great opportunity to connect uh, all the teachers as well as students. Um, I'm just been thinking what teaching really means teaching is not pouring in, it's drawing out. We don't have to pour in the knowledge, we need to draw knowledge from India. If you look back uh, how the curriculum has been built, 
mostly it is a teacher centric in the early 80s where probably some of uh, uh, us studying it's just a teacher who takes up he has a limited resource his knowledge is the base learners are passive but if you move little late 80 uh, late 90s and all it becomes a learner centric because there are a lot of textbooks availability content availability um teachers has more resources to share and also learn simultaneously right if you move from 90s uh, to uh, you know 20th century it are more like a content based learning when i say content based learning i'm not talking of uh, you know uh, content that what we show it is more like uh, for example you know i just show you pictures of lots of squares or cubes are there i'm trying to teach uh, counting right um i don't want to say start with the number how many objects that you see right um there are many ways you can see the object many ways you can group the object somebody may see it like a 5555 and then they can just count it much faster how many files are there or somebody will be counting like a whatever the clusters you know 5 3 2 if you really throw in this without telling them what they are trying to do that's a content but we are strict to the concept that what we wanted to deliver but content helps us to draw out the procedures of learning and these are the common ways in which people are adapting because contents becomes available there are a lot of resources available but if you see uh, you know what is the main objective of a teacher in modern era and particularly the era in which we are living in the information era whether we are connecting to rural or we are building the tomorrow's uh, engineers and doctors right the biggest problem now we are having is a distraction distraction is the biggest uh, you know enemy in learning process distraction do happen in the classroom for example if you are talking about a one way of learning suddenly a new teacher comes in and just show you a new way of learning that itself is a distraction can leads to loss of interest right i'm not i'm not talking of uh, other social distraction they tend to have but i'm just talking about the distraction in the classroom itself so what is required we need we have contents now right uh, we have concepts now a syllabus is fixed but what is missing in current students is a kind of a self learning of the ability or a collaborative learning ability a study together right a uh, kind of a ownership uh, in learning process so it's a very difficult thing you know one of the objective for a teacher is not delivering the content to build in a characteristics a positive attitude towards learning right i i want them to get interest in learning get a hold on it so younger ones don't see the benefits adults do see a benefit if i learn what i get right so there is an importance along with the content to create um, interest in learning so i was just mentioning a very important process here is more like a, a online teachers or uh, or any teachers i just put it in general should be like a scaffolding right it's more like we are building uh, or we are building a knowledge in children we should act like scaffolds uh, pillars temporary pillars we are not permanent we are temporary pillars pillars present when you fall Right? when you're about to fall so I sorry dr bring you more. yeah sorry dr suresh i think those are wonderful thought but just in interest of time let me just move on but wonderful i think you are challenging all of us to really rise up to this challenge of how do we make this really learning work for them right and it's a very very powerful challenge that you've thrown back to all of us thank you for making that right so can i move over to muralidhar now and i know mulidhar has been teaching has tons of experience in teachers and all that stuff so can you share some tips for us as an online teachers on how how can we make this teaching a lot more effective and suresh has given us some tips there but what will be your thought on course material and how should we make this delivery happen the learning really becomes fun for these kids uh thank you lekraj and thank you venkat for this opportunity uh, you uh we've been talking about content dr suresh talked about it all of that is available now so therefore it is incumbent upon everybody teaching 
to be prepared with the content in the first place, right? So you have to make sure that you are prepared with the content. And luckily today we have a lot of resources available to prepare for content. Having done that, then I've been training and I've been teaching personally using a few principles. In fact, for the purpose of mnemonic, I've called it as mark because a lot of students look for marks, unfortunately. Right. So the first one is M is mind. You have to have the mind in the class because like Dr. Suresh was like suggesting there's a lot of distractions. So you basically take attendance for the body, but are you taking attendance for the mind? How can you ensure that the mind is in the class? Right. The second one is having one of the ways to ensure the mind is in the class is by asking questions. Look around and make sure that especially the ones who are not paying attention or who look distracted, ask them questions and ask them in a very pleasant way, not necessarily in a, uh, you know, in a very harsh way, but in a pleasant way, because asking questions nurtures the original thinking in them. And having asked the questions, you come to learn a little more about where they come from, what they know about the topic, and then make it relevant to them. The moment you make it relevant, learning becomes fun. You have to make it relevant to them. And the fourth one, which I've always found a lot of people wonder is why is it that some people learn fast and some people learn slow? So there is a connection between the body and the mind. So the ones who are slightly on the heavier side, they take a little more time to learn, but once they learn, they never forget. The ones who are very slim, they learn very fast, but they forget very fast as well. And the ones who are neither slim nor on the heavier side, and most of them are teachers. So almost all of them who become teachers are usually neither slim nor on the heavier side. We are okay with learning fast and not forgetting, but we are very short tempered. We get angry very fast. So we need to realize that there are these three characteristics among the students. So we'll have to use our own engagement methods to ensure that, uh, you know, the uh, learning happens in the classroom. Then these were four principles that I've used. If you feel that, you know, uh, what is it that each point that we make? If you give me some time, I can tell you. Yeah, so yeah, Mulidhar, I think these are wonderful tips and I hope that you write a book one day. <laughs> like the wonderful, wonderful tip. How do we bring out the backbenchers and the folks who are not engaging? This is an important aspect in even their local teaching because we know that especially girls to a lot of other students, they just don't engage sometimes. So thank you for bringing that out. I, I hope we can go back, but let me just go to Professor Wish first. And I know Professor Wish, you have tons and tons of experience. You have been voted MVP several times for your excellent teaching. And you have been advising industry as well. So can you talk to us a little bit about innovation in the teaching space and especially from a, and how can we sort of spark that thinking uh, of innovation uh, in both students as well as in teachers, actually. Professor Wish? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Okay, thank you for this opportunity, uh, late Raj Venkat and uh, other panelists. Wonderful job. We should give them full marks for what they have done so far. Um, I think it's certainly a, a very relevant topic here. Um, as uh, Lekaj mentioned, uh, my research as well as teaching uh, has to do with the topic of innovation. And uh, I teach in the US as well as in some universities in India. Certainly, as Suresh was saying, uh, the teaching in India has come a long way from the 70s and 80s when we studied in India. It has improved, but there is still a lot more distance to go. Uh, we all know good teachers teach, great teachers inspire. And so we have to really inspire in this age of, as other panelists call distractions or what I might call outside options, you know, because uh, students have outside options, uh, uh, including the internet and geo and whatnot. And so we really need to inspire. So that is number one. And number two is the, the pace of knowledge generation is growing so fast. Every day, you know, we are seeing newer discoveries that we cannot teach everything within the school uh, age, you know. So we really need to teach the students how to learn to learn, you know. So it's learning on material, but how do you learn to be a lifelong learner, a continuous learner? So that becomes important. But in the interest of time, what technology can do, uh, it has some weaknesses. And as Arun mentioned, we really have to leverage the classroom assistance, the last meter as he called it that's a very good point 
But at the same time, technology allows people to be self-paced. They can learn at their own pace. They can go back, you know, if they miss something, they can go back and listen to the video recording, um, you know, especially if it's a video recorded class. So one of the things I do is I flip the class. So I record my lectures, the students consume them in their hostels, and then they come to the class and we really do exercises. And so the idea of recording lectures is now the students can watch it at their own pace. Some students are very fast. They can watch it at 1.5, uh, you know, 150 percent pace. And others, they may have been distracted. They can go back and watch it again. And if we immerse it with diagnostic questions along the way and finish it with some questions to ponder as well as diagnostics, that really completes the loop. And in some ways, we can bring the best of both worlds. Uh, we still cannot do away with, you know, in-person contact but we really uh, are just starting to learn how to leverage this technology better. And Evidia Loka is at the forefront of that in India. So, you know, doing a fantastic job. And Venkat, I've, been, I've known him for the last year, is really, really quite wonderful. Quite... So let's continue this journey. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, thank you for the wish. Wonderful tips on that one. And I know we, we have to stick to the time slot that's given to us. But before I try to wrap up things, I wish this it seems like all of you have so many great suggestions we could go on for hours and hours, right? Maybe we'll do that some other time. Uh, but let me see if the Sumuk, uh, if you are online, is there any, are there any questions on chart for maybe one question we can take from that to our panelists? If there are any questions at all. Any questions? Sumuk? Hello, am I audible? Uh, I'll be stepping in for Sumuk today. I'm Akshay. Okay. Uh, there are a couple of questions actually. Uh, probably I would uh, uh, give across to you one that has been addressed to all of the teachers. The question reads as follows. You all have been inspiring teachers. What is it that you have learned in your experience as an EV Dialoka teacher? This question is to all the panelists. Great, good. Yeah, that, that's a wonderful question. So I think from, uh, from my perspective, it has been a, I mean, it's been a both way learning. It's just, I learn a lot every day. I think how to really have the patience, how to be creative with these students actually with their background. And I know that when I give homework, they don't do it. I have to understand the local context, but let me switch over to our own and other panelists to share their thoughts who have been around much longer. And um, so Arun, would you like to speak up first and see if others have a thought there as well? Um, thanks for that question, Akshay. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. sir, we can hear okay. you. Uh, it's been a fabulous two-way street for me with children. Um, it is really mind-boggling that uh, we have people in, this, in our country who have not been even acknowledged that they exist. The time they talk to you, somebody on a screen and somebody calls out their name, their eyes light up. And uh, it is deep, perhaps the most a challenging or very satisfying thing for me when they understand stuff, when I talk to them, connect with them. The best thing I can say is whatever, my inspiration has been Sonam Wongchuk. He was a speaker actually last year. And he said, if you can make the stronger ones become stars and the weaker ones become strong. Yeah, but I believe, I believe, uh, that is the happiest moment for me. I have seen a lot of strong ones have become stars in my class now, and a lot of weak ones have become strong now. That's perhaps the best takeaway for me. Great, Thank you. Great. great. Anybody else wants to speak on the inspiration aspect? Uh, yeah, maybe I'll speak something on it. Yeah. Uh, uh, for me, I will say that my students, they motivate me every time. Uh, for example, like for me, it is just a small effort from my side that I open my laptop and give a lecture. But my students, the school is located in a very remote corner of Uttarakhand. So they travel every day by foot for at least two to three hours to, you know, come and attend this, these uh, lectures. And then they have these, uh, this enthusiasm and the, uh, you know, the thirst to learn new things, which motivates me even further to put some more effort into teaching. So this is again, as Arun sir said, uh, you know, synergistic relationship which becomes stronger with 
each small effort that comes from either my side or from my students. Great, great. Great, so I think that we probably are running out of time. So I'm let's, let's try to wrap it up and I wish we could continue, but let's wrap it up. It's a great conversation and uh, great to sort of hear lots of tips right from this last part about how we are deriving inspiration ourselves as well as passing that on to students, how we have to sort of use the connect principles that Arun described and how sort of uh, we have to use the local contacts, how to really have the right kind of content and be prepared with it and how to sort of make them lifelong learners, the point of preservation duration. Others have mentioned it actually, Dr. Mulidar gave us a nice framework of how to really bring out folks on the back and how to engage with them and make sure that we understand their personalities and accordingly tailor our teaching to them, right? Padma spoke about inspiration and how, how we can actually continue to bring that uh, to the table because with that passion and inspiration, we can overcome lots of challenges that we have uh, here. So overall, lots of tips and maybe we can continue these questions in offline mode, maybe through some other forum, but today let's try to wrap it up. Once again, I'd like to thank you all the panel members and Venkat and Evidya Loka and rest of the volunteers for this wonderful platform. And thank you all. Signing off thank for you. today from panel perspective. Thank you, everybody. Let's the rest of the program continue on. Thank you, all the panelists. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Legraj. Uh, I must really congratulate you for bang on time, 30 minutes, uh, keeping us. So uh, technology is just an enabler. I think people play a very, very effective role. Uh, I think it's a, one is, uh, I think, a great takeaway uh, from here to see that we can do so. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for the panel, the esteemed panelists who are here, uh, which I think is the fuel and inspiration, I must say, for each one at the here. Uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's just sometimes overwhelming to see the kind of minds that are thinking about for the children of this rural parts of the country, actually. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Lake Raj and panelists.